That's dope. But obviously the United Arab, Arab Emirates right now seems to be leading the charge in the Middle East and maybe even in the world for crypto adoption. It's crazy. Yeah, definitely. You know, Binance has moved their headquarters here. You have all the pioneers in the space moving here. The CTO of uh, Artifact, Sam, lives in Dubai as well. Uh, and a lot of other people are moving here as well from the crypto space and the NFT space, Web3 in general. It's becoming sort of like a hub. Uh, I'd say more than just the Middle East, I'd say for Europe at least. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all of the like European companies and influencers and everyone seem to at least have a home now in Dubai. And I even saw that Kraken just got a, I believe, a banking license in Correct. Abu Dhabi. So it's not just Correct. Dubai now, right? It's everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. UAE, UAE as a whole is uh, uh, quite becoming uh, quite crypto friendly and is attracting a lot of crypto money. Do you, do you feel that like in the air? On the streets, we like feel people it. talking yeah, about crypto, crypto, or is it sort of like we see it in the news, but it's not really a part of people's everyday lives? No, everyone's talking about it. I mean, um, you see it everywhere because you have a lot of young people who've moved here recently with a lot of money, and you see it in the cars and the way they dress, <laughs> you know? So people who've made money with crypto have a certain flair. <laughs> so you see Yeah, it, the uh, uh, loudest watch everywhere. they can find and the brightest uh, <laughs> yeah. Lambo they can find, right? <laughs> But yeah, the funny thing yeah, is, yeah. I think that that's a uh, that's like the natural progression of getting uh, wealth young and fast. Yeah, hundred. But then it goes backwards, right? Like I know that. Listen, you 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 obviously very wealthy family, Demac. You have a huge, massively important job, and I've talked to mutual friends of ours who are like, yeah, now he's selling all the cars and watches to buy more crypto and NFTs. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's it's a, it's a valid point. I mean, when I, when I came back from school, I had like six sports cars and hyper cars and a different watch every day. And now I have like one watch, which I wear. I have, I have the hyper cars. I barely drive them. They're just like parked in the garage. Uh, I think your, your priorities sort of shift, you know, it, you get it out of your system. Yeah, it's funny though. It's just sort of like a bell curve. Like the crypto gets yeah. you all those things and then you realize that all those things don't make you happy and you buy more crypto to secure your future, right? Yeah. T-shirts and sweatpants, that's all you care about. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, well, that, there's, yeah, there's a reason that the Zuckerbergs and uh, and and like a Steve Jobs of the world never change their clothes, right? Uh, buy fancy yeah. things. And like Sam Bakeman fried sleeps in a beanbag in his office and has $30 billion, right? But it really is interesting. <laughs> I think the people who are building in this space are, are much more interested in building and the actual fundamental importance of it than they are about the personal wealth that they're acquiring from it. 100%. And I think, uh, I think the more younger people get into the space, uh, they're driven in a different way compared to some of the older people. Uh, when you work with younger people, they don't mind working 18 hours a day, seven days a week because they truly enjoy it. It's something they love. And you see a yeah. lot of that in this space. Well, that, that's clearly uh, apparently the case with you, right? I mean, you're the general manager of DMAC. Anyone who's been, I think, to Dubai or the, even UAE sees the name on every building, right? I mean, you guys yeah, are arguably so, the largest or one of the largest real estate developers in the entire Middle East. So we're the largest private developer in the Middle East. We're the second largest overall uh, developer if you take in the government and semi-government semi companies, the largest being uh, Airmar, which is owned semi-owned semi by the white government. So if you take out the government-owned companies, we are the largest. Right. And you're not just building physical buildings. I read that you are investing a hundred million yeah. in a city in the metaverse and the skyscrapers look incredible from the video that I saw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we've, we've been working on it internally for some time. I mean, I got into the space around a year ago, uh, started looking, you know, it was when, um, Boyd of Yacht Club made the, made the news for the auction where I think a Boyd of got sold for a million dollars at the time. And I was like, what the hell is going on? It's a JPEG. Why is someone paying so much money for a picture? A picture that's a digital image. It's not even like a physical piece of art. And I started doing my homework. Probably the biggest mistake I did was back in October when I think the floor price was like 30 ETH. I wanted to come in and buy like 100 of them. And my family told me, you're stupid. What are you doing? Are you going to spend this much money buying a JPEG? Don't listen to your family sometimes. That's <laughs> what <So> the advice <laughs> I'd give you out of that. So I didn't listen and then, but then eventually I did jump in. I looked at a lot of projects, Clonex, some projects on Solana, 
uh, I helped build a project called the Crypto Bear Watch Club. And it opened my eyes. I, I realized that we're so early right now and there is a paradigm shift happening in the world. And the way I like to explain it to people is when people talk to me about, oh, how can you spend so much money on a, on a JPEG? Because I've, I've been a big watch collector my whole life and I understand hype goods. So for me, it, it was a no brainer. I said, okay, I go out to the mall much less than I used to. I go out for dinner much less than I used to. But I'm spending more and more time on my phone, spending more and more time on my laptop. When people talk about the metaverse, they don't realize, but we've been living in a metaverse for some time. When we're living when, right now, me and you speaking together over a Zoom call, this is a digital interaction. And I think the more people shift to living online, the better technology is going to get. Uh, I think we're just one hardware breakthrough away from having significant upgrades when it comes to uh, our, um, augmented reality and XR. And I think when that kicks in, you're gonna, people are not gonna care so much about the Rolex on your wrist when you're dealing with them online, but that's when some of these avatars are gonna have a big, uh, it's gonna become sort of like a status symbol. So people buy cars, they buy watches today to show that they have wealth or they're part of a certain group or class. And I think that's something which people are underestimating when it comes to the uh, PFP projects out there. Yeah, I think the masses underestimate it and think it's silly, but the people who get it, I mean, we have tens of thousands of people who are willing to pay millions of dollars for NFTs, right? So yeah. there's yeah. a there's a very large community that's willing to spend and put all of their wealth into these things, right? I mean, there's people, I know people who bought a board ape for, you know, $10,000, live in a rental apartment, have no money and are sitting on a three or $400,000 ape because they don't want to sell it. Right, and selling it can meaningfully change everything in their life, right? Would yeah. be yeah. for them would be generational wealth to some level, but they're willing to hold it. That says something. Yeah, it, and and I think you know you see a lot of people understand it, but the reality is, I think it's around three million unique wallets today, or something like that, that hold NFTs. So, Nothing. with the small amount of people today who are in this space, look at the the value. So that's when it when it gets mass adoption, I think you're gonna see a huge increase in the value of a lot of these projects. I think it's very important to pick the quality ones from the, from the rug pulls and from the, from the BS projects which go around. Rug pulls, BS, and outright cash grabs, right? Just people who yeah. are like, I'm gonna copy Board Ape and you know, make two words that rhyme and put it together and sell a cartoon. And those are going to zero. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And you know what the, the thing is, people get fooled because these projects come out with 150,000 people on Twitter, discords with hundreds of thousands of people. It's just all bots. It's bots yeah, typing it's on Twitter, bots numbers. typing on yeah. Discord. It's just fake and yeah. they cause the hype and then they disappear. So right. people have to be careful with what they invest in. It gives the space a bad name to some degree, but I think anytime you're early in anything, it's the same. That when I lived in New York City, you could buy uh, a copy of any Rolex that existed on the corner of Canal and Broadway, right? There's no no yeah. weird thing to buy a fake Rolex and wear it around. And it's not really that different. As you said, it's just doing it digitally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's another use case for NFTs. With your fake Rolex, yeah, you could walk into the store and the guy in the store wouldn't be able to tell it apart. Whereas with an NFT, you can easily see well, all, everything's on chain and you can easily see is this the real product is this person trying to be something he's not so there is many use cases for it and i think we're just so early and those use cases are just going to keep developing further and further i mean look at nike they entered the space with artifact they had their drop last week their first uh, collaborative nft drop where they dropped the sneakers um huge success and you know, when I speak to like, if I speak to my dad and I tell him there is a digital sneaker. So I bought a Murakami drip sneaker right at the reveal and I paid like 45 ETH for it. If I go and tell him that, he's going to think I'm retarded. But when Literally. I speak to my younger brother, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he'd be like, what the hell? You paid so much money for a digital sneaker. But my younger brother, who's 14 years old and he's played Roblox for the last few years and he spends thousands on skins and whatnot. When you speak to him, he's like, oh, wow, that's pretty sick. So... You, you, it, you, people need to understand there's a big gap between the way the younger generation are thinking about goods, luxury goods and hype goods, and how the older people have thought about them for the longest time.
and not to say it so bluntly or in a rude way, but older generations die off and the younger generations replace them, right? So even if this doesn't happen exponentially, it's somewhat inevitable that the people who don't get it disappear and the people who grew up native to these things, right? My kids are seven, my son will be three. They're never gonna know a world when NFTs, Bitcoin, all of these things were not just part of the discourse, right? So eventually 100%. when they're in their twenties and they have money, it's gonna be natural for them. 100%. Not that far away. Yeah, it's like in the, I remember in the late 90s, I was very young. And so uh, there was a tech boom in the US and my dad, he actually opened an office in Silicon Valley at the time. And he used to be gone for like three weeks a month. And at the time, people thought the same thing about the internet, you know, they used to think this internet is something bizarre. And how can, how can the world connect in such a way? And people in the space are just out of their minds. Well, if you look back at it now, there was a lot of fluff in the market. The valuations did go crazy high. And there was probably 90% junk, which is probably the similar case in the NFT market today, Agreed. where you have all these junk projects, but you do have that, that pedigree of top quality projects, which are gonna make it and which are gonna stand the test of time. Yeah, I think you could actually expand that and say that's true of the entire crypto space, right? 99% of these altcoins will disappear. They'll have no utility and, and the best ones will rise just like the internet bubble you talked about to be the Amazons and Facebooks and Googles of, yeah. of the next generation. I mean, that's how it works, right? A bubble is not necessarily a bad thing as long as something meaningful comes out of it. Like people yeah. always compare us to the internet bubble like you did in a negative way. I like how you sort of positioned it in a positive way because that's how I view it as well. Yeah, you always have winners coming out of it. And it's just about um, select, being very selective in what you invest in and uh, trying to filter the good from the bad. Okay, so I, that all makes sense. I think that generally our viewers probably understand the concept of flexing and hype goods and scarcity. But why does a company like Demac need to be building in the metaverse, right? Like uh, from your business standpoint, what will that look like? What are you going to build? Why does that matter? I mean, if you're selling buildings in the real world, why do you need to have them in the metaverse? So there's a couple of things. We, we used to, we've been quite progressive when looking at um, digital assets. When I say digital assets, we started developing two years ago, uh, digital experiences for our customers where we have today, we're selling around. So we sold for quarter one of this year, around $2 billion in real estate. And out of that around a hundred million dollars came out of what we call internally pure online sales. Now, what do I mean by pure online sale is somebody sitting on the other end of the world who's never been to Dubai, who doesn't step into our sales office, and he actually buys his house or apartment on a Zoom call. Sight unseen. When I took un completely unseen. Now, we, I started this initiative in the beginning of 2020 when COVID hit. We started with very small sales in our pure online segment. We started around a million dollars a month, grew to three, five, six. Now we're doing around 27, 28 million dollars a month. We have a target to take at 150 to $150 million a month uh, by mid next year. Now, part of that was, okay, how can we make our digital experience more immersive for the client? So we started creating 3D assets where people could walk around and see our off-plan units, change their finishes, uh, select the views. And we kept developing on that idea. So when I got into the space and I started saying, okay, hang on guys, we're already building all of this in 3D. Um, I'm a big fan of the Clonex ecosystem where they drop the loot pods. And I spent time, I would go and I would decorate my loot pod. I, I add new NFTs in there. You know, it becomes something like my virtual home. And now on cyber has added the multiplayer sort of functionality onto there. Now we've been building communities and building real estate for over 20 years. It's, it's our bread and butter. In Dubai, we own probably some of the most successful communities. So in one way, it was a no brainer. We said, okay, we have the digital assets and we have the capability in-house to build these digital assets. We work with the best brands globally. We, we've been working with Versace for a long time. Our project in London is co-branded by them. Uh, Roberto Cavalli, we purchased the brand a year ago or two years ago in COVID. Um, Paramount Pictures, Fendi, we have a, tower, a project by Fendi. Our buildings in Dubai are very, they're very beautiful and they're very um, symbolic. So we have all these assets. And I thought, okay, let's take these assets. Let's digitize them. We've already done half the work. We have the communities already. 
we have access to them because that's what we do. We build communities. Let's put it all together. And that's where we start working on the idea of uh, D Labs, which we launched last night. And the idea is to create virtual communities where we have our beautiful buildings. We create digital shopping experiences. We allow people to buy their houses. We also give houses to our customers where they can interact with their community. So you might be living in one of our communities, the smallest community we have in Dubai is 50 million square feet. So it's around the 30, 40,000 population. You could be living there, you put on, and we're building it to be on Oculus as well. So you put on your headset, you walk out of your house, you can experience your community in the real world, or you can actually digitally experience it. You can meet your neighbors, you can go to the community center, and you can interact with different people. So the idea was first to build it for our current customer base. But then when I started getting to the space, we said, okay, why don't we offer this to others as well? And the way we're going to go about doing it is we're going to re reward people with utilities who purchase uh, our NFTs and digital assets who don't own any of our real world assets. So we have hotels, we have F&B, we have a resort which we're putting up in the Maldives with the Mandarin. So we're going to give access to our real world assets to all of our customers in the digital space. And we've already done that. Like, so one of the, the projects which I was involved in building their roadmap, Crypto Bear Watch Club, uh, anyone who owns any of those NFTs, they get 50% discount in all of our hotels. They get 50% off in all our spas. They get discounts in all of our uh, F&B and spa outlets. So we're taking that idea and we want to expand on it within the Damak ecosystem. So when you buy a digital house from me, you can interact with everybody in the community. You can upload your avatars in there. So if you own a board Ape or you own a Clone X, and a Clone X enables their uh, interoperable avatars and they airdrop it to all of their owners, you could walk around in our metaverse dressed up uh, with your avatar. Um, we also own Roberto Cavalli, the fashion brand. So we're now moving towards creating digital wearables and we're linking it again with the real world uh, items. So if you purchase a uh, a hoodie from Cavalli, which is going to be a limited drop of 150 pieces, for example, you can put it on onto any of your avatars which you use, but you also get access to that item in the real world. Uh, De Grisogono, our jewelry brand, which we purchased a year ago as well, we're following a similar roadmap. We're going to create digital jewelry for the first time, which, which gives you access to those real world collections also. So it's all about merging the real world assets along with the digital assets. Wow. I mean, uh, you've got to be the only uh, real estate company in the world that's thinking this far ahead. I haven't heard of any others. They're doing anything like this. So, uh, you know, a lot of people ask me, they say, what is going to be different about the experience? So why would someone want to come or buy onto the, the Damak metaverse per se? But I think the way we're positioning it is we want to position it as a high-end uh, luxury metaverse where we're going to use very high-end architecture, very beautiful images, beautiful renderings, uh, high fashion. Um, make it like a, a luxurious digital city. That's the way we're um, envisioning it. Which is incredible because there's plenty of people who want to visit that sort of place in the real world and can't. And now you'll be able to yeah. step into the metaverse and have the same experience that somebody who's paid millions or tens of millions of dollars for actual real estate in one of your communities or something to have the same experience. Yeah. And I think we all know that eventually it's going to be, I mean, it's not there yet, but I think that eventually the metaverse will look very much like the real world, you know, like as I, just as yeah. we've seen with video games, like call of duty, some of these look very real, you know, at this point, and they didn't use to ice play Pac-Man. Right. So <laughs> a little, a little bit different. You can see how fast that evolves. There will probably be a time when you either put on your goggles or your wearables and it feels almost real. You know, I, I'll tell you, I take it a step further. The, the gloves are coming out, I think, end of the year, uh, which let you feel what, so you put on your headsets, you wear the gloves, and whatever you're touching in your metaverse or in your virtual experience, you can actually touch and feel it. I'm going to go a step further. I don't think we're that far away. I think within the next five to seven years, we could have fully immersive virtual experiences. I mean, when the iPhone came out, the it took a while for the iPhone to come out, but after the iPhone came out, the progression was insane. It was exponential. Yeah. Every update brought so many more features. And I think 
we're just one one piece of hardware away from that breakthrough where it's going to go on an exponential curve and i don't think we're far away from having those experiences where you're sitting at home you put on a suit a body suit and you plug in and it's something like the matrix i know some people think it's very far fetched but i truly believe that's the path. i think it's far fetched that's yeah. where we're headed i think that's where we're headed where you put on this your headset you put on your suit and you're in our resort in the maldives in the mandarin and you can feel the breeze on your face you can feel the uh, actually feel what it's like to be there and i think that's going to be a huge market because a lot of people can't afford to fly to the maldives it's very expensive a lot of people can't experience those experiences in the real world i mean if you look at people if you're living in hong kong you're living in a tiny apartment you're coming home from a long day of work it it sort of becomes your escape you know i used to play video games growing up uh, and it's a similar concept where you're going to put on this headset you're going to put on your suit and you're going to you're going to imagine yourself in this beautiful large house with a big garden on the beach and that experience is going to be much more satisfying to you than living in a small cramped apartment so i think that's the way we're headed and i think by moving early um we're going to have a big advantage down the road because we'll understand the business we'll understand the way communities work in web3 i mean i was spending when i remember when crypto bear watch club was being launched i was spending 12 hours a day on discord and i i i understood that there's people whose whole livelihood is on discord uh, there's people who don't have in real life friends but all their friends and their family is on discord so uh, and again this is where it's a tough it's tough to break this barrier and explain it to to my peers because they look at me and they say are you stupid i mean come on what do you mean someone ha- someone has friends who are only on discord or digital I'm like guys i've experienced it i've seen it it's true when when building crypto bear watch club the team was put together on discord you know someone we met flew in from albania someone flew in from uk and we became genuinely very close friends so i've i would say that i've done more business certainly since covid started with people i've never met in real life than people that i have by like a factor of 10 you yeah, know 100% uh, not even close and i've never met these people some of them maybe i'm starting to meet now you know at various conferences and things but you know i think that everybody at this point can at least uh with instagram and facebook even twitter can at least in some way understand that people can make these sort of real connections without a physical you know uh physically meeting in the real world it's absolutely true. So outside of the metaverse and everything that you guys are doing, we've discussed obviously what's happening in the United Arab Emirates. I have to imagine that you guys probably have thousands of workers, migrant workers probably to some degree from other companies working on your buildings. Do you see on the ground any case for crypto for remittances or people sending money back to their families? Is that something that's happening because that's obviously was the original use case of Bitcoin and crypto? I think it depends on where the where the workers are from. We definitely see it with some of the mid-level employees when it when the ones whose families are back in Europe etc and who understand the space. When it comes to the sort of the migrant workers who are on the site, on the construction sites, um they don't have the education or the knowledge base so they don't understand crypto. Um having said that, we I met someone last week and they're working on some uh, protocols which allow instant remittance um and there's plenty of them here in dubai i think with the way the regulation is moving and how they're becoming more crypto friendly and with the, the uae becoming a hub for crypto and for nfts for web3 in general i think it's going to be more and more acceptable down the line and there will be um different methods of payment which will make paying using crypto much easier Ah, uh, looking forward to it. I think that the way you just described UAE is definitely ahead of it, but I think that's what the whole world eventually hopefully becomes, right? It's just a it seems like a natural transition to digital is going to happen. Like I said, for the same reason just that the younger generation is going to take over, but it just makes perfect sense for that to happen. But it's awesome to see what's happening in your country and how fast they're really starting to adapt. Yeah. No, you know it's surprising. I mean, when i had a meet up in my house where i invited the local nft community so people from the the space who live in dubai so we're 100 and there were around 200 people actually it was a couple of days ago oh. and and we were very limited i had to close access because we had a form with qr codes for access to sub gate crashes because it was in my house 
And we stopped it at 200 people. And we had over 200 people who wanted to attend, but we said no to. So, but the, the nice thing is, you know, in the Web2 space, when you have this sort of formal event, people keep to themselves. They don't interact with people they don't know. But when it was this event where it's people who are used to Web3 communities, everybody was so um, open with each other. People were like talking like they've known each other forever. And I think what causes that is being part of those different. So we had Cologne X holders, Board Ape owners. Uh, it was a meetup for Crypto Bear Watch Club. So when I think these people, because they've dealt with each other digitally in the past, they become so much more free and um, uh, they're able to interact with each other much better than, than they would in a typical environment. Yeah, there's a level of comfort and also just shared interest, right? You know that you yeah. guys are extremely passionate about the same thing. You showed up for that reason and you already sort of have a trust with these people. It's really amazing. And I'd, so to anyone, I guess, who's a critic, you know, our parents' generation who say it's not real, you can just show them that it actually works in the real world as well when you bring those people together. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's what, I think that's what projects need to focus on as well now is bringing that real world utility to the project as well. well. I can't wait to see uh, what you guys build, man. It was a pleasure speaking with you and I want to come over in, uh, to Dubai and check it all out. Oh, please be our guest. I mean, we have beautiful buildings and homes all over Dubai. Just let me know whenever you want to come in. It's one of the few places I've still never been, actually, which is kind of crazy. I've just never made the trip, but something no, obviously COVID froze it. I had it a plan at one point. But yeah, man, so I will see you in Dubai, all right? Yeah, definitely. All right, man, thank you. Definitely. All right, thanks.